Having fat deposit like in the middle, it's called central adiposity, is very frustrating. Whether you are just going about normal life and it's just piling on there, or you're trying to lose weight and you can't lose it there. Okay, central adiposity is a real thing, and it's not just how we're genetically created. Okay, the kinds of foods we eat can influence that. Okay, also, certain things like testosterone can influence it in males. So let's break that down a little bit more because there's some interesting data that demonstrates that, well, testosterone could be playing a role there, and how do we go about changing it, at least temporarily, so that we can start to develop new patterns. So today's video sponsor is Thrive Market. I put a link down below. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So no matter what, kind of diet you're doing, like if you're vegan, or maybe you're trying paleo, or maybe you just want to go gluten-free, they have something for everybody. And you can sort by different diet types, you can sort by category. It's like isolating exactly what you need from a grocery store and then being able to get it delivered to your doorstep in a couple days. So totally epic. And that link below, because they are a sponsor, is going to get you 25% off of your initial order as well as a free gift. So that link is down below and a thank you to Thrive Market for supporting this channel. So there is this old study. It was published in Metabolism Clinical and Experimental. Okay, and this was like the old one that found that, okay, if we took a look at like central adiposity and visceral fat, we saw that generally it was associated with high levels of inflammation, it was sometimes associated with insulin resistance, but it was also associated with low levels of testosterone. Well, that doesn't, I mean, that does tell us, yes, we can see like low levels of testosterone will contribute to visceral fat and central adiposity, but we need more data. We need what is called a randomized controlled study. We need something that really looks at clear stuff. So now what do we have? We have that, okay? We can look at that. And I talked about this in another video. So this study was published in the International Journal of Obesity. It took a look at 23 subjects, gave them either placebo or testosterone for just eight weeks, okay? Now, what's fascinating about this is after eight weeks, the group that received the testosterone had a dramatic shift in their visceral fat. But the funny thing is they didn't lose any weight. Okay, so what happened is they only lost the visceral fat and they probably gained some muscle other places, right? Whereas the placebo group didn't have any change in their visceral fat. So that's demonstrating that testosterone definitely plays a role, which could say like, okay, as we get in our 30s, our 40s, our 50s, it just becomes increasingly easier. Like every extra calorie we take seems to go right to the middle. It's like when we were younger, it didn't work that way. It would go to different places, intramyocellular lipids, all kinds of stuff. Now it's going there. So what's going on? Well, this study didn't go into the details with the mechanisms, but we do know a few things. We do know that we have a higher level of androgen receptors in our visceral fat. So what that means is androgen receptors receive testosterone and they receive a signal, right? So when our androgen receptors are sensitive in our visceral fat, they are sensitive to any change in testosterone, any change up or down. So all it takes is a little bit of a drop in testosterone to trigger a pretty big impact in our visceral fat androgen receptors. And suddenly they say, okay, well, we need to start storing, right? But there's other mechanisms too, right? When we look at insulin resistance, people that are consuming a bunch of carbohydrates, well, a lot of times people that have insulin resistance also have low testosterone and vice versa, low testosterone, insulin resistance. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? We don't really know, but we'd like to believe based on a lot of the data that probably has to do with the insulin resistance first. Okay, so it all ties in, but this study clearly indicated that even just a modest amount of testosterone therapy improved this which just demonstrates that testosterone is playing a role. But I'm not suggesting that everyone go and just add testosterone, right? We need to look at the underlying mechanism here. Okay, there's two things. One, if you add 50 milligrams of zinc, you can potentially improve the affinity of androgen receptors. Okay, so you're not increasing testosterone levels, but you're improving how the receptor receives a signal. So if those receptors in our visceral fat are so sensitive, then maybe just influencing with a little bit of zinc to improve the affinity is going to help them register as a higher testosterone signal. So potentially that can help. But another thing is there's an interesting study published in the journal Endocrine, I found this fascinating. They put subjects that had low testosterone levels and metabolic hypogonadism on a ketogenic diet for 12 weeks. Okay, this is fascinating. And they found after 12 weeks, they not only reversed their metabolic hypogonadism, basically their lack of testosterone production that had to do with their hyperinsulinemia, okay, and their uh, insulin resistance. They not only improved or reversed that, but they also had an increase in their testosterone levels, 371 nanograms per deciliter. That is tremendous over a three month period of time. Now, that's not even suggesting you have to continue to do that because once that hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis is working again, 
then you can potentially get things rolling again. So possibly three months of a ketogenic protocol or just limiting carbohydrates for a little bit and adding some zinc into the mix on a daily basis could improve that. And it's not gonna just magically make the weight fall off of you. You might even see the scale stay the same, but you might allow yourself just enough of that reallocation of adipose tissue to get over that just, I don't know, apple-shaped hump that you're stuck in. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I will see you tomorrow.